Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and welcome to the third and final video of our part 9, which is revamping our game, and in this video we are going to look at adding explosions. Right off the bat I want to go ahead and show you the explosion file I'm going to use. I found it from this website right here, Gush uh, is the explosion spreadsheet I'm going to be using, so I just wanted to show you that there. And I already have that situated inside my, uh, inside my project folder, and it just looks like this. So those are the explosions we're going to use. All right. Now basically, what we want to do is we want to have an explosion whenever a bullet collides with a comet, or whenever a comet collides with our ship. Uh, since we're going to have more than one explosion, we're going to need an array of explosions. We saw before, uh, in video one, uh, that we already have our, our explosion struct defined. That's already there. Uh, we did that beforehand. I just wanted to go back and point that out again. So since we are going to have an array of explosions, and since I have five bullets, I know I'm going to probably have about five explosions max at any given time. It wouldn't hurt to make that any bigger, but I'm pretty sure I can get by with uh, five explosions. So I'm going to do num explosions and equal five. Just like that. Great. I'm going to need to modify uh, a couple of our functions, but we'll come back to that. And I'm going to need to add a few functions here. So I'm going to go ahead and add the functions first, and I'll, I'll go over which ones we're going to modify here in a little bit. So I'm going to do void init explosions to set our explosions up. That's going to take explosion, and then an array explosions. I know I'm just going to spell this word all sorts of incorrect tonight. And then int size, and finally an Allegro bitmap for our image. So we've got that, that's going to be our init function. Then we're going to have void draw explosions, and that's going to take our array of explosions and our size. We are going to have start explosions. Again, taking our array. And more importantly, well not more importantly, but also with the array, we're taking uh, both the array and the size of the array, and we're going to take an X and Y position. It's going to tell us where we're starting this explosion at. And then finally I'm going to do void, update explosions. Since our explosions are uh, animated, we will need to update them so that they can cycle through their animations appropriately. Great. Okay, so those are our helper functions. And I'm going to go ahead and copy these. Perfect. All right, so I am going to come here to where I'm declaring my arrays. And I'm going to go ahead and create my array of explosions of size num explosions. And I'm going to go ahead and declare the image for my explosions, my sprite sheet. And that is going to be exp image. I don't feel like writing explosion on the way out. And then we just need to load it in. I'm going to go ahead and load it in here underneath common image. So I'm going to do exp image, it's going to equal al load bitmap. And in this case, that's my, my sprite sheet's name. And it's a PNG that has transparency built in, so I do not need to do any form of transparency. It, uh, it's already built in. Since I am creating this image here, I'm going to come down all the way to the end, and I'm going to do AL destroy bitmap, I'll pass in exp image. Great. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's st starting us off there real nice. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize these down since we're not working with them right now. There certainly are a lot of them. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, I had my image name copied and pasted, so let me come back up here and copy these. Copy my prototypes. I'll come down to the bottom and paste them. That way I don't have to type all those out. And for init explosions, 
we are going to specify uh, all our starting variables for all of our explosions. Since it's an array, I'm going to do for int i equals zero, i is less than size i plus plus, and I'm going to say explosions sub i. I'm going to copy that. So I'm end up typing it a lot. Um, dot live equals false. So for starters, explosion's not living. Uh, it's not currently blowing up. Um, max frame. In this case, for the spreadsheet I'm using, the max frame is 31. I accidentally overwrote that. So I'm going to recopy it. I always hit Control C on accident, so I'll do Control Z V. Uh, current frame is going to equal zero. And then our dot frame count is going to equal zero. And then our frame delay. Now we want this to cycle really fast, right? There's 31 frames of animation, and I want my explosion to appear and go away um, so that we can have more explosions. All right, so explosions should not be on the screen very long because they, they block line of sight, if you will, um, and they, they take up a space in the array, and so we don't want them to be there. Uh, for a very long period of time. So my frame delay is only one, all right? So it's going to take approximately a half a second for an explosion to appear and then run its course and disappear, all right? 30 or 60 frames a second, we have 31 frames of animation, so approximately half a second, all right? Now, the frame width for this particular image is 128, which means the frame height is also 128. There we go. Um, our animation columns is eight. There are eight animation columns on this particular spreadsheet. And our animation direction is going to equal one. We want it to animate in the positive direction. And finally, the image is going to equal image. Awesome. OK, so that will init all of our explosions for us. I'm going to come back up into our code where we init everything else. And I'm going to simply call knit explosions and I will pass in explosions and num explosions. Fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, and I'm uh, sitting thinking why is that giving me an error? And my image file. There we go. Now we're alright. Great. So that'll initialize everything for us. I'm going to go ahead and build it just to make sure I don't have any errors. Great. Build just fine. Awesome. Okay. So we have our initialization. Now I'm going to come down here and handle our drawing of the uh, explosions. And of course, that's going to be another loop for it. i equal to zero. i is less than size. i plus. And I'm going to say if explosions.i dot live. So if it's alive, obviously we don't want to draw it if it's not currently alive. I'm going to do int fx equal explosions dot current frame modulus explosions dot animation columns times explosions dot frame width this should all be pretty uh, familiar to you by now int fy is going to equal explosions dot current frame divided by explosions dot animation columns times explosions dot frame height. Awesome. And then finally I'm just going to do AL draw bitmap region. And I'm going to pass in explosion sub i dot image. And then fx fi f I'm sorry fy explosions dot frame width explosions dot frame height and then our positioning which can be explosions sub x minus explosions dot frame width divided by two explosions dot y minus explosions dot frame height divided by two and our flags which will be zero. Great. Perfect. Okay so uh, that will handle drawing all of our explosions come back up here to our draw function and I'm simply going to call draw oops draw
draw explosions. Now, the order in which I make these calls is important, and I want to draw explosions very last. The reason I want to do that is because I want them to appear on top of anything else, so we get the full effect. If I uh, if I drew my ship last and then my or I drew my explosions first and then my ship after, my bullets after, my comets after, the explosions would appear to be behind all of them, and so it wouldn't give the impression that they were actually exploding. So I draw my explosions last, so they explode on top of everything else. Alright, great. Still can't test any of these, because we're missing a few vital points. And that is the ability to start our explosions, and the ability to update their animations. So I'm going to come to start explosions. Let's just flesh that out here real quick. Now, I do want to point out that we aren't going to call this, this anywhere inside of our main, the start explosions. Our start explosions is going to be called specifically when a collision has happened between a bullet and a comet or a comet in the ship. Uh, that's going to cause explosions to appear on the screen. So it's very special how we're going to tie these in. Uh, but I'm going to get the code working for now. So I'm going to do for int i equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus, and I'm going to say if not explosions live. We're looking for a dead one. And I'm going to say explosions live is going to equal true. So it sets it up to be live. And explosions x is going to equal x. And explosions y is going to equal y. So the x and y we read in, we're just setting to our explosions variable. And then so we don't create a bunch of explosions, we only want one. I'm just going to call break. Alright, real simple function there. I'm just going to go ahead and build, make sure no comp compiler errors, great. And then finally is our update function. Now our update function is not going to look anything new like you haven't seen before. It's our standard uh, animation updates, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, so for int i equals zero, i is less than size, i plus plus. We only want to update if explosions.live Explosion sub i. I've been not saying the sub i. I guess I should be. And we're going to do if plus plus explosion sub i dot frame count is greater than or equal to explosion sub i dot frame delay. And then explosion sub i the curve frame plus equals explosion sub i dot animation direction. And then finally, we got to make sure that we uh, we're cycling in the right direction, or we're, we're cycling back around. Um, cycling back around is not so super important uh, with our explosions. You're going to notice um, that what we're going to do is we're actually just going to kill our explosion once you finish the cycling. But we have to cycle back around. By that I mean set current frame back to zero once it finishes, so that the next time the explosion appears, we actually see it because that variable will maintain its value even if the explosion is dead. So I'm going to say if explosion sub i dot current frame is greater than or equal to explosion sub i dot max frame. So we have reached the end of our animation to explosion sub i dot current frame to equal zero. And then explosion sub i dot live is going to equal false. It's no longer run. And then at the very end, because we, our frame counts allowed us to advance, I'm going to say explosion sub i dot frame count is equal to zero. All right, awesome. So so far so good. Um, we haven't got a chance to see anything yet, but I'm going to go ahead and plug my updates in. So I'm just going to come up here where I'm updating everything else. You'll see I have my update uh, comments and bullets and all that stuff, and I'm just going to go right above it. And I'm going to do comment up or update explosions. The order here isn't so important. Awesome. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and build this here. And no errors. Fantastic. So the only thing we have left to do is to actually plug it in. It's unfortunate we haven't had a chance to test to see if any of this stuff has been working so far. We're just going to have to trust that it's been working. And we're going to have to check to see how we plug this stuff in. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at uh, the collision of my bullets, all right, where the bullets collide with my comets. 
Now, what we can do is we can come to this collide bullet function, and whenever we have this collision here, you know, bullets sub i dot live equals false, comet sub j dot live equals false, uh, ship score plus plus, we can start a comet, or I'm sorry, we can start an explosion. The problem that we have is that since we're not using classes, since we're using uh, just structs and in, in, in functions, uh, we do not have access to our explosions inside of this function. So we've got to make this function even bigger. We've got to tell this function that it's also going to be reading in an array of, of explosions. So I'm going to come all the way up to the top here to where it says collide bullet, and I'm going to add to that function. I'm going to add that it's going to take in explosions, or, or, or array of explosions, and it's going to take in a variable E size for explosion size. Right. And I'll just copy that. Come back down to my collide bullet function. Paste it. And then right in here after I update the score of my ship, I'm just going to call start explosions. I'm going to pass in the array that I just read in, which is explosions and I'm going to pass in E size. Awesome. So now whenever a bullet hits a comet, we still we, our ship will score and all that stuff, and we'll start an explosion. Uh, oh, I almost forgot something very important. Where we're starting the explosion, and that's going to be bullet sub i dot x, and bullet sub i dot y. Awesome. Okay. So that's the, the where the explosion is going to start. So that one's fairly simplistic. And now we need to look at updating the comments. And the comments we're going to need to have to we're going to need to modify in the same way, right? We want an explosion whenever a comet hits the ship, uh, but we don't tell it. You know, we don't have access to the comments or to the explosions array. So I got to come back up here to collide comet and pass in those two variables again, and come down to collide comet. right here and right after a comet collides with a ship we've got to do start explosions I'll pass in explosions I will pass in E size and I will pass in ship.x and ship.y now one thing a couple things I forgot to do is I gotta come up here and I got to uh, modify uh, the header of this function just like that alright so our functions are set, now we just need to modify where they're called, or how they're called. Um, you will remember that uh, these functions are called from inside of our main. So I'll come all the way up here inside of our main to where we have collide bullets and collide comets. And I will pass in explosions and num explosions. And for our collide comets, I will pass in explosions and num explosions. All right, fantastic. So we'll go ahead and run this. That's up on my screen. Fire and look at that. That's pretty neat. And I can let him hit my ship. We get that nice explosion there. See how we draw it on top so that we get uh, we don't draw it on top so we get the explosion to appear on top of everything else and uh, it looks it looks pretty darn cool. Okay, um, so that's going to finish part 9. Uh, in this part we added uh, the animations and the images for the ship, uh, animations images for the comets. And we added this new feature which was explosions and we added the uh, animation and images for that. Uh, so now uh, that's going to pretty much conclude the, the side shooter or space shooter game for now. And uh, stay tuned for the, uh, the next part. Uh, I do believe I'm covering the audio. So uh, stay tuned for that.